Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to Acts chapter 4. We're looking at a portion of Acts that I think is often overlooked, or if it is uh, read in a sermon or in a Bible study, it's quickly passed over, and somehow the message is sent, it's not really relevant to us. However, this is an example of Christians obeying the commandments that Christ gave to all of his followers regarding stewardship and caring for the poor, specifically in caring for the truly poor, of which they're hard to find, as I've already said to you, in, in, in wealthy countries. Uh, even when we you know, see homeless people holding up signs and so forth, uh, looking for help, you know, we ask the question, why are you not seeking help at a homeless shelter? Uh, because there's so many of those around and so forth. And, and please don't, don't think that I'm being insensitive. It's just that I've traveled all over the world in the worst slums this, this, this world has to show anyone, where people are living in little cardboard shacks, where sewage, raw sewage is running right by their front door. It's just an opening. And they're sleeping essentially on the ground, on cardboard, uh, at the mercy of the elements and starving, okay? And there are hundreds of thousands of people crammed into slums like that around the world. So what is called poverty in the wealthy Western world doesn't seem too much like poverty to those of us who have traveled outside. And the Bible definition, again, of, of you know, lack is lacking food and covering. All right, so I asked the question last time, how are we going to meet the needs of these kinds of people if we can't find them? Well, we need help. Uh, we, we need to employ uh, the help of some. Well, we could go ourselves. You can travel to Africa. You can travel to Asia. You can travel to Latin America. And you can find all kinds of brothers and sisters in Christ who really have some pressing needs. Um, and that's one way. You just go yourself. Or you can employ the help of an organization or a missionary or someone who does have direct contact with those types of people. I'm surprised there aren't more organizations that do that. If you know anything about Heaven's Family, you know that that's one of the major things that we do. And we've got specialized funds that uh, focus in on very pressing needs for widows, orphans, the handicapped, um, those suffer suffering uh, uh, as victims of natural disasters, those who have re are refugees who fl fled from wars and so on. And, and if you go to our website, heavensfamily.org, you can quickly learn all about that. We feel like we're providing a way for rich people like you and like myself to obey Christ's commandment in this regard, to care for the poor. But are we doing enough? That's another question. Is God satisfied if we're just tithing? I asked that question last time, and I think you know that I made it very clear. Where did Jesus talk about tithing? Jesus talked about don't lay up treasures on this earth, but lay them up in heaven. And so the obedient disciple, the wise follower of Christ, has his earthly pile as small as possible and his heavenly pile as big as possible. And in one, in one sense, Jesus is not asking us to give up anything. He's trying to save us from losing everything that we've worked so hard to gain, right? Because he talked about how what we store up in, on the earth is only temporal because everything on the earth is only temporal. So that's why we should be laying up as much as we possibly can in heaven. And people who just tithe, and that's all they ever aspire to do, no matter how much they prosper, are missing that point. And that's why I'm talking about that point. You need to get with the Bible program and start laying up more treasure in heaven. You know, I guess tithing is laying up something there, but it seems to me that God's gauging us by our sacrifices, not by dollar amounts, right? Look at when, what Jesus said about that poor widow woman who put in just two little pennies, you know, and he said she's given more than all those wealthy people put together. They put, out, put in out of their abundance. She put in out of their need. All right, so let me caution you about giving uh, to the rich. Uh, that's often what our giving winds up being. We give to our churches. Well, there, you know, everybody in our churches, if you're in this country, in the United States of America, if you're in the UK, if you're in Australia, if you're in Western Europe, if you're in one of the major cities of Asia, you know, living in a high rise, you're wealthy by the world's standards. And, and to give to people who are like you, you know, Goodness, Jesus even warned about that very thing, didn't he? Can I read to you from Luke chapter 14, beginning in verse number 12? I, I've mentioned this in the past, but I, I feel like I better mention it again. Jesus also went on to say to the one who had invited him to a banquet at which he was seated, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, 
Otherwise, they may also invite you in return, and that will be your repayment. So, you, you know, you're, you're just giving and receiving back and forth. But when you give a reception, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, since they do not have the means to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So those parties and dinners you hold for your rich friends, and they will say, oh, you're so generous to, you know, have, have this over and have steaks on the barbecue. Don't think that Jesus is going to say, well done, good and faithful servant for that barbecue you had for your rich friends. You know, those people don't need your help. They don't need your generosity. It's the, 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 the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and particularly those who are out of reach of all the social services that, that are so common in the wealthy countries. We've got to get beyond the borders of our own countries and reach out to people who are really, really, really needy. And if you know a missionary uh, or your church has contact with the missionary, there is a great way to get involved in meeting the pressing needs of the poor if that missionary is working where there are those kinds of poor Christians, okay? And many of them, of course, are doing that. This is something, I'm telling you, I'm just so burdened by this. This is something that is just so neglected within the within Christendom today, within most churches. It just seems like the stewardship and caring for the poor, true biblical stewardship and caring for the poor is just almost non-existent, almost non-existent. Yet it's a regular, common, everyday feature in the book of Acts that Luke commented on on several occasions as he gave his narrative of early Christian life. This is a component of following Christ. If you are not doing something to care for the poor, you are missing God's will. You will have to give an account about it, okay, because it's so clearly in Scripture, okay? They laid their proceeds at the apostles' feet. How do we do that today? All right, well, that's what I want to talk about next time. So I will see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.